Let's begin with a quick demo. We have a file uploader to upload documents. I have the Space Wikipedia article here in space.json format. If we look at it, it is just text of the Wikipedia article. I am simply going to drag it into the file uploader. Pay attention to what happens here on the VS Code on the data folder. Let's do it. As you can see, space.json is created, and now the data is being vectorized. And soon we will see a pickle file right here, vectorstore.pickle. Now we can talk to this document, ask questions. For example, what is space? And we get a response to our question, what is space, in a chat-like format. Space is a fundamental concept in physics. What happened in the background is that we have searched for this question in our vector store and returned to top three matching context information and send that to GPT-3 to get an appropriate answer for our question based on this document. Now, I have done some prompting Kung Fu to actually get these three buttons over here. These three buttons are topics of what GPT-3 thought was most relevant to the current conversation. We will talk about each one of these more in depth. So along with our response, we have received three topics, which we can click and get the Wikipedia article for. Let's click for space-time. When we click for space-time JSON, it's downloaded from Wikipedia. When you, use these, when you use these buttons and get additional Wikipedia articles to your data folder, then you need to rebuild the vector store. Let's do this now. This takes a few seconds. The new vector store pickle file is built. Now we can ask a new question, what is space-time? Because now our context includes both the space and the space-time Wikipedia articles. And we get an answer. Space time is a mathematical model and goes on. Our original article did not have to be a Wikipedia article. You can add as many articles here as you like. Uh, if you upload a file, it will automatically get vectorized into the pickle store, the data. But if you use these buttons, you have to manually rebuild the vector store. As you see, when we asked our new question, our new topics have been revealed, like special relativity and Minkowski space. Now we have downloaded Minkowski space and special relativity into our data folder. Now we can rebuild the vector store and to continue asking questions. Our knowledge base is expanding this way. Let's dive right into the code and review it to see how all this works and how we have improved it from the application from the part one of this series. You don't have to watch the part one to understand this, but if you did want to watch the part one video, then you will have a better understanding. I'll put the link in the description and it should also pop up in your video window as well. We are first installing Streamlit and Streamlit Chat. Streamlit is a great way to build and share your apps based on Python. I'll put the link in the description. And we are following in the footsteps of the LangChain Chat Your Data Challenge. I'll put the link in the description as well. And now we are doing the other necessary imports from LangChain. We're importing OpenAI from Ingest Data, which is, in, which is one of our files. We're importing embed documents. Embed document has a function inside of it called embed underscore doc, which scans the data folder and gets all the documents with the directory loader from Langchain. And that uses the recursive character text splitter, again from Langchain, with the chunk size set to 1000, and that creates the documents, which are split into 1000 character chunks at most. After that, we are using OpenAI embeddings and the files, which we have imported here, to create the embedding space and call it the vector store. And then we save the vector store to a vector store pickle file. That is what we are importing here, which we will use. Next, we are importing some prompt templates and a function to build the chain from another file called query underscore data, which is a file that we have built. This is available at the LangChain tutorial template. It's available as a link from their blog. I'll put this link in the description. So what's going on at the query underscore data is that we are creating two prompts. One is a question prompt. The other one is a follow-up prompt. This is, I have a great explanation of this in the first video, but I have actually modified this prompt to be able to get the related topics, as you see right here. This prompt allows you to inject context along with the question so that GPT-3 answers given some appropriate context. I have changed this prompt to say that add a new line and return a Python list of up to three Wikipedia topics which are related to the context and leading with a related to the context and question leading with a hashtag like this without mentioning anything else. And I've given a single example. I've said hashtag because we are going to split the response at the hashtag. And in this file, we also have the function get chain, which defines the length chain along with the language model we're using and the appropriate prompts. 
at the main.py file, we are also importing from Langchain callbacks get OpenAI callback. This is if you want to have your token counts. We'll talk about this as we are going over the code. And we will be using Wikipedia's API, and we need to pip install it. The instruction is pip install Wikipedia dash API, just like this, or search Google for it. Then we define wiki underscore wiki as our Wikipedia API, and we define a function which searches for a topic. This topic is going to be linked to our buttons, and when those buttons are clicked, we will retrieve the page based on that topic. We're going to get the title and the text of it, turn the title to lowercase. And this step is important if you want to avoid encode encoding errors i am encoding the entire title and it takes to ascii and then decode it back so that i don't have any unnecessary unwanted characters and if the title is not in our data directory then we simply add it to our data directory these two lines of code uses the streamlets sd and then element set page config and header to actually display some text on the page such as the page title which appears here and the lang chain demo right here this next line defines a streamlet file uploader which is this element right here. These are all very simple with the streamlet. And then right here, we are checking if the user has uploaded a file, and then that file does not exist in our data directory. Then we allow the uploading of the file, we write it to the data directory. And then with the SD streamlet spinner, we start the embed underscore doc option. We are importing the embed underscore doc, as you remember from our ingest data. And the spinner allows for a waiting dialog while the embedding is being completed. Which as you will see when we click on rebuild vector store, like this is the spinner element. By the way, I will be uploading all this code to my to Patreon for my Patreon supporters. Feel free to follow along from the YouTube as well. The link will be in the description. So next we're checking if the vector store.pickle exists. And if so, we are simply loading it right here. And then we define our chain with the get underscore chain assigning the vector store to it. Remember, we had defined an imported get underscore chain from query, da query data right here. The next is a bit of a streamlit hack to be able to generate a chat-like interface. We are generating a session state which doesn't get destroyed if it's each interaction with streamlit. So we are checking if the generated is not in the session state, then we are initiating it. And if passed is not in the session state, then we are initiating it. Generated is the AI's responses and passed is the user's inputs then we are defining a punk function to get the input from the user whereby by defining a placeholder from streamlet and this will actually correspond to this right here then we are calling the function to assign the user input to the variable user input then we are creating a button for submit your qu query you have to click the button to input your question or query once that is done then we are creating a docs which is a similarity search over the user input over our vector store these docs will be making up our context space. So then with the get open AI callback, SCB, remember this was the import we had down from langchain.callbacks. This is necessary if you want to get your token count. Then we are defining output as the chain.run. We had defined a chain here on the line 65 with our get underscore chain we have imported, assigning the vector store to it. And we are assigning the input to be the user input, vector store to be the vector store, which is our pickled vector store file. Context, I'm assigning the three documents from the documents, relevant documents, which we've achieved by doing similarity search. We are only accepting three of it to be the context. We are initializing our chat history, and we are saying the question is going to be user input, QA prompt, and the condensed question prompt, and the template, which we have imported from query data.py. And then we are going to be able to just simply print the total tokens. This will print it in the terminal, but you can also write it using an SD element, streamlet element. Then we are appending to the session states past key, the user input, and then the generated the output, which we will receive from the result of this chain.run. And then here I am looking for a hashtag in the last generated, in the last generated item in the session state. And then I am simply assigning the generated and then the session state, the topics, which I'm generating right here to be where the output is split right exactly at the hashtag so that we are removing the response, which comes from GPT-3 to the actual answer to the question. And then the list of topics, which has also generated, which is separated by a hashtag, if you remember, because when the response comes back, it comes back with the answer and with a hashtag and a list of three topics. Since we are printing the session state generate 
the before and after along with the topic so we can see what's going on in our terminal. If we simply make a query calling the saying, tell me the most important things about space, we will be able to see what's going on here in our terminal. As you can see, our document length is printed right here, which we were doing on line 92. Okay, we got our answer. Let's examine our printouts. This first one is our first original response. As you see at the end, it is a hashtag along with a list. After we have executed this line, then we are actually splitting it and our response turns into just the answer and a separate topics, which are assigned. Now, after this, we are creating a topics.txt file if it doesn't exist. And then we simply write these topics to our topics file like this as comma separated values. And we are removing the square brackets and also the quotation marks if it exists any. And then we just simply write it character by character. We are writing it to a file to be able to maintain the value and to be able to change it because Streamlit reruns the entire script again and again every time you make an action on the page. One way to alleviate this is to use the session state, but I like using files as well. This topics that text file will be renewed every time a new action, a new response has been arriving. Then we create three columns using the st.columns argument, and then we open, we, we make sure that topic does text exists, and then we open it, and then we read the topics, and then we create a button for each topic, and also we assign a wiki search function, which we have defined earlier with the topic for that particular button. We say if call number one button, because if this button is clicked, it will be true, and this line will be executed with the wiki search with the given topic. As you can see, those buttons are represented right here. For example, if we click on cosmic inflation, we have retrieved the article for cosmic inflation. In the next step, we are creating the button for rebuilding the vector store. We are again using the spinner. We are saying with the ST spinner, we simply do embed docs, which, which takes away, which takes in all the files that exist in our data and recreates the vector store.pickle file right here. And then the final step, we check if the session state generated exists, then we just loop over the generated state and we simply iteratively print out all the user inputs and the responses which we have received from the AI, which then creates this nice little chat sequence. So this is pretty much all. I will slowly scroll through the code. You can see all three of these files. And like I said, this code will be available for Patreon supporters. I'll put the link in the description. I appreciate you watching the video. I hope you will find it useful. After the scrolling, maybe we'll just play with it for a little bit, see how cool it is. I really enjoyed making this. I love the fact that our knowledge base is continuously growing with this user interface, with this app. Let's just move on to ingest data right here. And these new technologies are amazing, and I'm sure people will be building really interesting stuff. Thank you for watching. So let's just move on to some demos for playing with the app. Let's ask who are the scientists most important in these fields. Let's submit our query. It's a bit slow. Query takes about 5-10 seconds. Rebuild vector store is slow and gets slower as you add more items to it. So be mindful of that. I realize that Fi's embedding right here um, in right here in ingesting data is very it's getting slower with the chunk size being smaller. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. If anybody knows a better answer, please let me know. So here we have our answers, Galileo, Newton, Minkowski, Einstein. So see, it's suggesting that we add Galileo, Isaac Newton, Herman, Minkowski to our database. So this is really a great way. Maybe you want to explore more about Galileo, Galilei, for example. But after you click these buttons, you also have to rebuild the vector store. Keep in mind. Let's ask another question. Let's ask who Galileo was. We just got a response. Galileo Galilei was an Italian astronomer, physicist, engineer, philosopher, and a mathematician. But if you look at a, if you look at the terminal, as you see, we are printing the token count right here, one thousand. This is we were able to do this because because we are calling because we are running the chain with the get OpenAI callback, which we have imported up here. Let's try to ask to compare the life of Galileo to life of Newton. This is an interesting question. So with this kind of system, you can be really fluid and elastic. You don't have to search the document. You can ask this kind of questions because we will find the relevant bits in all these documents and, and then GPT-3 will put it together for us. Let's read. Galileo and Newton both made significant contributions to the scientific revolution. 
Galileo was one of the pioneers of modern science and revised established Aristotelian and Ptolemaic ideas about geocentric cosmos. And then does it Newton's theories about space and time help them explain? So this is great. It's comparing Galileo and Newton. These are both very interesting figures in science history. So thank you for watching. Please join our Discord. I put the link in the description. The code is available for Patreon followers. So I'll put that in the link as well. Please do subscribe if you're enjoying the content. See you next time.